Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt. And before we get into the main video today, I just wanted to take literally 10 seconds and say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who subscribes. We just hit 10,000 subscribers on the channel and that's, it's honestly a number I never thought that I would really see. So thank you everybody. You didn't come here to see subscriber numbers. You wanted to see some webcams. So let's jump into the video. So I personally use a premium webcam. I use the Opal C1 on my computer every single day. And as someone who works from home and is on a lot of video calls every day and then does YouTube before and after work, it's really nice to have a nice camera just always attached to my monitor that I can just turn on in a snap, start recording and do whatever I need to do. For me, that's super, super valuable. But I totally get that the $300 webcam is just gonna make a lot of people laugh. And that's just not a thing they're ever going to purchase. So in today's video, I wanted to go the complete opposite direction and look at the cheapest webcams and see if they're worth it at all. So I went to Best Buy's website, I found the most popular webcams list and found two for $30 in the top 10. I'm putting the specs and names here so you can check them out real quick. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna do some video tests right now so you can see how they look, how the microphones sound inside them if you wanna use those. And yeah, we'll just see if they're $30 gets you anything worthwhile at all. I will say up front that the design for both of these is really rough. Neither of them look particularly good and they overhang quite a bit on your monitor. So they're probably gonna cover up some pixels on your screen, which is not ideal, but yeah, again, 30 bucks. So let's just jump into the test so you can see what you're getting. So this is a very common setup and it kind of is the baseline for a lot of people. This is the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro, the 13 inch model. Uh, so before the MacBook Pro redesign and everything, and it is okay, like it's decent. It gets the job done, but it's definitely not exciting. And of course, because it's a laptop, it's gonna be very low. And then unflattering angle number two is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, this is the M1 Pro model. And yeah, it should look a little better than the other MacBook Pro. Uh, still not incredible, but definitely a usable picture. And I'm also using the inbuilt microphones uh, and you may hear some background noise with the air conditioning running. Uh, I did not turn that off. I purposely have that on for these tests. So you can see what the kind of background noise reduction is on these, how much that's going to impact things because odds are when you're doing these calls, you're going to want to have your air conditioning on. You're going to want to have the heat on. You're going to just have noise in your environment. So yeah, this will give you an idea for how these microphones do. And this is the Opal C1. It is a huge upgrade in quality and hopefully the video speaks for itself. The audio, maybe not as much of a win, but the video is quite excellent. And for the price point, it had better be. At 10 times the price of the cameras we're about to see, this had better deliver. And in my opinion, it does. Okay, so this is the audio and video from the Logitech C615. HD video camera and my god does it look terrible. This is a 1080p picture at 30 fps. Uh, it does have autofocus so it can focus on my hand and then focus on me. So it autofocuses just fine. That's probably the best thing I can say about it. But this is a ideal lighting condition for a webcam. I have a window over here. I have a fill light over here. I am very well lit and it just doesn't know what to do for some reason. And yeah, it's just shockingly bad. So I really can't recommend this camera. It has a nice wide field of view. It has autofocus and it does a good job of keeping like focus on me, but that's really it. I think that this image looks really, really bad and I can't recommend it. Now this camera actually surprised me. This is usually $10 cheaper, but again, they were both $30 when I purchased them on sale. Uh, this is the Logitech C270 and it's only 720p. It doesn't do autofocus. So like it's never gonna focus anywhere else. It's just a fixed focus lens. It has a much tighter field of view. You can see I'm sitting in the exact same spot, but it looks like I'm much closer to the camera. But honestly, I'd rather use this video than the one on the last Logitech. It's just, it's not good. Like I feel like I'm in a dark room, even though again, I'm very well lit. Um, it looks better. This is a much more usable video than I'm getting from the more expensive, again, only $10 more expensive, but from the other one. And what makes me really annoyed by this, I guess, is that the last camera is the number three best-selling webcam on Best Buy's website. This one barely cracks the top 10. And while it doesn't look better on paper, I think the video does look better. Not great, definitely not good, but for 30 bucks, it's pretty decent. And this is about as good as it gets. This is continuity camera in macOS Ventura, which is coming out in a few months. It's currently in public beta. And yeah, I'm just using my iPhone 13 Pro Max as a wireless, uh, prove it here, kind of recording into this computer right now. 
and you can use it as a wireless camera and microphone so that's what you're hearing and seeing right now and obviously this looks best of all but it does require you to have an iPhone that you can mount on top of your display uh, either permanently if it's an older iPhone uh, or of course the video quality is not going to be quite as good as this because this is the latest iPhone or if you want to just put your current iPhone up there on demand as you need meetings here and there, uh, you can do that. But yeah, really great to have this built into macOS. There's some third-party apps that do this already, but great to have it built into the operating system as well. Okay, so we're back on the mirrorless right now, and oh my god, it looks so much better. Uh, this is the exact same lighting setup, by the way, that all the webcams were just using. So window over here, light over here, exactly the same. I've moved to nothing, <laughs> and this is just uh, what a mirrorless camera can do versus a webcam. But I digress. Uh, of the two cameras that I was able to get on sale for 30 bucks, I think the C270, which is normally $10 cheaper, is the better camera. I think that it does not look great, especially in low light. Again, this is the best case scenario for these cameras. In low light, it doesn't look good. Neither of them look good. Uh, but at least in a well-lit situation, it's able to give me a okay picture. It's definitely not good, but it's definitely at least better than what the C615 offers. And the C615, which is atrocious, which has unbelievably bad video in all my testing, that's the number three selling webcam on Best Buy's website today, which is just, oh, it makes me a little upset actually, because it's so bad. So. If you want to spend as little money as possible and you're going to be shopping at Best Buy or these are probably similar prices everywhere, I would go with the C270. It has a lower resolution. It has a narrower field of view. It doesn't do great in low light. Neither of them do good in low light. But yeah, it's a little bit better and gives you at least something passable. <laughs> it's definitely not good, but it's at least passable. So that's my recommendation for these. Um, again, if you can spend more money, you should definitely spend more money on it if it's something that's important to you and you're able to afford it. But yeah, that's a look at some of the cheapest webcams you can buy today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button. Uh, if not, uh, I'm very sorry, but I'll see you here next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.